Hello and welcome back everyone. This is your host Jaber and welcome back to another episode of Business Studies. Specifically, we are doing business strategy these days and we have been looking at the strategic management process throughout this time. Now, I've broken this down, the process of strategic management down into three phases. We call them three seasons. In the first season, we dealt with strategic analysis, which is the first phase of strategic management. It's all about finding out how the inside, inside of the business is evolving and how the external environment is constantly changing. And we've seen quite a few uh, techniques that help a business to identify these changing factors and how to come up with strategies accordingly. Now, in season two, we now move to strategic choice. And if you would remember that during strategic analysis, I chose a knight here from your chessboard. The reason was a knight signifies that you have to send out your forces, find out what's happening within and outside the company. So it made sense. Now when those knights come back from the strategic analysis phase with all the information, then it needs to go to the think tank of the kingdom. And the king identifies the bishop as the person, the wise one, to think about which strategy should we go ahead with. Of course, you can't go ahead with every, uh, with every strategy that you uh, come up with. You, can't, you prob possibly won't have the resources to, and it's probably not wise either. So you have to, at some point, identify the one strategy to follow. And that's what the strategic choice phase is all about. This is where managers use techniques to basically decide which way to go forward. It's a process of deciding on a single most viable strategy based on the findings from your strategic analysis process. So whatever we've learned, based on that, you're going to implement. So at this stage, you're looking to answer a few questions. First of all, which strategy to pursue, right? You want one. Why? Because we know limited resources, uh, time, and all that has to come into play. And we also must know have the resources been identified? Whatever we need, if you're going international, then you're going to need local information. So have a lo has a local office been identified? Have local employees been brought in? So you need to make sure that in terms of labor, capital, land, whatever needs to be done, those resources have been identified and arranged for the chosen strategy. And before you go ahead with finalizing this whole process, you must make sure that it's still in line with the overall company objectives. So as long as you do these things and you have an answer at the end of this phase that this is the one strategy you want, then you've done it right. So we're going to go ahead and look at a few techniques and starting with the first one, the ANSOF matrix. So our first technique, the answer matrix say, is used by businesses before entering any market, of course. And this technique is a very good preparation before actually making your grand entrance. And what the business is trying to figure out at the end of this whole process is the riskiness of any chosen strategy. How risky is any strategy? It, does it have a high risk of failure or there's a high chance of success? It, should we still go ahead with it or not? Would we have to amend our strategy? How would we have to amend our strategy? So at the end of this, all this whole process, it identifies to a business how risky a particular strategy is. So obviously, you want as a business that your strategy should be in line with your objectives. And as you've spoken earlier, a business could choose to have a high risk strategy because that may yield a high reward. So high risk, high return, low risk, low returns. It simply depends on what the business's objective is. But let's begin with NSOF matrix. So the NSOF matrix is based on two concepts. It, it makes use of these two. First of all, the NSOF matrix will look at what kind of market is the business operating in. Yeah, that's the first part. Then we'll look at what kind of product is the business offering. Okay, those are the two factors. Which market are you entering or operating in? Which product are you selling? And within each of these categories, the market that you are entering could be a new market. So you're doing something completely new or you have chosen to stick to the market that you already know. So either the market is new or it's an existing market. 
The same case with product. Either the product is something new that you've created, gone through a product development phase, or you have chosen to revamp or simply re refocus your efforts on selling an existing product. So there are four possibilities here that we're looking at. The new market, I'm gonna number that one here. Then there's your existing market, the second possibility. There's your third possibility, new product, and a fourth, existing product. New market, existing market, new product, existing product. Now, since this is a matrix, we're going to use these four possibilities to define a table here. And that's what really the essence of this whole exercise is to just watch what I'm doing. It will all make sense very soon. So in order to understand the riskiness of any strategy, business will compare the market, the product, of course, then it will give it, so then gi give it a name under the Ansoft matrix and we'll try to determine the riskiness of that particular strategy. So let's start with the first option, okay? Follow my line here. If the business is operating in an existing market, so let's say you're a food, uh, food we have a food business, let's say you make burgers and you still wanna do that, and you're still only selling burgers, you're not introducing pizza, so you're same customers, same product, just more of it. This strategy under the Ansob matrix is called market penetration. And you'll have to remember these by this name, market penetration. If the market is existing, but the product is new, so you're doing half of your strategy is something that you haven't done before, so it's a new product. Let's say you have a burger joint, and now you're selling pizza in it. That strategy is called product development. Okay, product development is where you're selling a new product in an existing market. When this gets flipped here, if you're in a new market now, but you're selling an existing product. So maybe before you were selling your uh, burgers just through your store, but now you've also contracted with an airline and you're selling to them. So that's a new market for an existing product for you. And that strategy is called market development. I'm gonna give you a little tip here. Just remember that whenever one of these two is new, so in this case, product was new, and in this case, market was new, and the other was existing. Whenever the product is new, that strategy is called product development. And whenever the market is new, that strategy is called market development. It's a little trick to remember this in case you forget. And now the last possibility in our matrix would be a new market, so you've now started stitching clothes, a uh, new, new product in a new market, and you're probably selling it to a new country, exporting it probably. So completely need something completely new for the business. They've never done this before. This is called diversification, okay? Now we use these to find out what each of these strategies are called. Now we've got to rate their riskiness. Now, if you're, in, you're if, if you're continuing in a market that's existing, so you know that the ins and out and the product is also known to you, when you know both the things about your strategy, then it's not a very risky strategy. So market penetration is a low risk strategy. In product and market development, we see that one of the aspects were new, the other was existing. So these two are a medium risk strategy diversification with both the market and the new and the market and product both that completely new to the business this is the most high risk strategy but remember it's up to the business's objective if you have a high risk and high reward business strategy then maybe diversification is the right strategy for you if you have a low risk strategy then penetration no strategy is good or bad it depends on what the business wants to achieve from this And the reason why it's called a matrix is because it's presented as one, just like so. Everything that we've just figured out in the table is simply placed here as it should be. Remember, existing market and existing product is 
market penetration strategy, which is the lowest risk strategy. The very opposite end, we have diversification, which is a new product in a new market. This is a higher risk strategy. Product and market development are medium risk. And this arrow, these arrows here indicate that as you go from market penetration towards diversification, when you change one of the two aspects under product and market development and then finally in a diversification you change both of the factors as you keep changing and trying new things the risk that you're taking keeps increasing but then again the chances for reward also increase if you can manage this correctly now i want to discuss these individually so just click on the next video and we'll continue the answer matrix discussion there